Man of Marionette of Detroit, Michigan, where everything depends upon a proper understanding of Genesis 3.15, where the Most High God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Her seed's heel will bruise your seed's skull. When the scriptures say, these are the generations of the heavens and the generations of the earth, what does that mean? If angels don't marry and they're not given into marriage, then how can there be generations created in the heavens? Generations are byproducts of people or things that procreate. Is it quite possible that God created two types of people. In Genesis 1, it says God. In Genesis 2, it says Lord God. There are two different gods here. There are two different beings here. I propose that you understand or consider, at least consider, Genesis 1 is wisdom. Because before you can understand what the, the father is, you got to understand who the mother is. Being a child of creation, being a child, you are nurtured by your mother, protected by your father. The first person you know is your mother. But the first person that knew you was your father. See, your father wanted to have a child. Your particular father. Well, you know, some of us you could say were mistakes. But anyway, your particular father wanted you. And then he went out and said, I need to find a wife or at least a mate to uh, facilitate this, uh, this matter of me having a child. Every man is a man, but not every man is a father. God could be God, but why does God have to be father? Why do you have to entitle him as father? Unless he begot somebody. So, when a man decides that he wants to have a child, the ability to make a child is within that man. Now the man goes and he impregnates the woman. This is the same imagery that we magnify in our vocation of being sons of God and sons of men when we were created in the image of God the Father and God the Mother. For when it said, let us create man in our image, our is plural. Let us, plural. Male and female, he created he, them. The Father created man in his image and the woman in his mate's image. Isaiah 34, 16, seek ye out the book of the Lord for none shall want her mate. Whose book is it? The father's. Who is her mate? Hmm. Better yet, none shall want her. Nobody wants wisdom. No one wants understanding. Because when you try to tell a person something, they, they tend to want to fight it versus consider it. So Genesis 1 is God the mother, wisdom. She's making everything in order for the father. She creates people. And the reason that she's creating people because God the father being king, he's going to create a prince. I mean, if God is the king and the mother is the queen, isn't, won't the son be considered a prince? like Prince of Peace? I mean, what's revealed in the beginning is hidden in the, in the end. That's why we have revelation. See, behold, a sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And she was pregnant, <laughs> pregnant. 
Now, Gentiles may say that that was Mary or a personification of Mary, but no. Where is your father? Our father, which art in heaven. Well, if God, the father, is in heaven, then where is mama? In heaven? See, to have the overstanding of what's really going on in this book, not only do you have to read, but you have to test the spirit. When it says these are the generations of the earth and the generations of the heavens, there are two bloodlines. But because you're not familiar with the people who are uh, of the heavens, doesn't mean that they're angelic beings as you have been taught within Greek mythology and uh, the Hellenizations of the scriptures and the Babylonian, the Persian and you know all of these other nations and how they interpret the text it is very quite simple God created two types of people one people who have the spirit and the other people that don't very simple and plain and when these people sons of God like Adam he was a son of God he didn't have any wings or a halo and he wasn't able to walk through walls and fly and all of that stuff. He was a person. But because he was a son of God, he listened to God. Or at least that's what he was supposed to do. And that's not a pun on Luke 3.23 being as was supposed. Because Jesus was the son of Joseph. And Adam was the son of God. But who was his mother? Shekinah because she had she too had uh, a finger an influence upon Adam her wisdom her Ruach when the Most High God the Lord God the Father when he breathed upon Adam he was giving Adam wisdom understanding how do you know that? Because now Adam has the ability to go and name all of the animals. And everything that he names is really under his subjection, a subjection, his authority. Because he is made in the image of the Father. Now, Adam, knowing that he's made in the image of the Father, he looks at the Father and says, Hey, I don't have a mate. He goes amongst the beasts of the field and he looks for a mate. The beasts of the field weren't animals. The beasts of the field were people. Because if you don't have the spirit, then you might be considered a goyim, a beast. But that doesn't mean anything bad or derogatory. It just means that you have not the spirit. And if God created you with not having the spirit, then you should be subjected to whoever God puts you under subjection to. Now, if you have a problem with that, then you are protesting. You are rebelling. And that's like uh, the Protestant Reformation. The Catholic Church claims to have the authority in teaching the Bible because Peter has the keys. Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of God and says, whatever you bind on earth, you bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. Keys represent authority. Peter now has authority. The Catholic Church claims that Peter was the first pope. You don't have to agree with it, but at least you can understand where the Protestant Reformation comes from. The Protestant Reformation are a group of people who are protesting the Catholic Church. They still believe in the Bible but they're rebelling and protesting against the Catholic Church. You have no authority, you have no one you, sh you can protest against. So now, Adam being a son of God, he's looking for a mate, and he goes to the father because he's trying to personify the image of the father, and he says, hey dad, I need a mate. You got a mate, the Gentiles have a mate, I don't have a mate. So God gives him a helpmate. Now, Adam is created in the image of the father. Eve is created in the image of the mother. 
Jesus, being the second Adam, created in the image of the Father, his bride, the ecclesia, not the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. See, when Jesus was stabbed on the cross or on the tree, blood and, blood and water comes out of his side. That's a prefiguration, a typology of It's a typology of Adam. Because out of Adam's side comes a woman. Out of Yeshua's side comes his bride. You know, Revelation is going to be a wedding banquet. So, Lucifer, people have personified him being masculine. Does he have a feminine counterpart. The whore. The whore. And if you look up the word church, you will see who the whore is. C-I-R-C-E because she turns men into swine. So everything is masculine, feminine, masculine, feminine. But if you are in Lucifer's whore it's time for you to come out of her my people see God's people don't do Sunday God's people God's children and people don't do Christmas God's people don't do uh, Easter I mean Jeremiah says why do you make cakes to Ishtar you know or, you know, the bunny rabbits and chicken eggs have nothing to do with, with one another. Isaiah says, don't cut down a tree and ordain it with silver and gold. That's Christmas. Christ was conceived on Hanukkah. He was the festival of lights. He was the light of the world. And then nine months later, September the 11th, he was tabernacled amongst us. But he wasn't God the Father. He was just the promise of God as God told Emmanuel to Isaiah the prophet that Emmanuel would be the promise of God's word in a child. That's where Matthew is drawing from. Emmanuel. God is with us. God has promised us. But what did God promise you? Genesis 3.15 the seed of the woman whose head would bru bruise the skull of the serpent's head. Serpent seed's head. So, when you can consider these things and you apply it to the Ten Commandments, you will see how you are rightly dividing the law. The first five commandments deal with God alone. Six through ten deal with man alone the fifth commandment is honor your father and mother the catholic church changed that and put it on the second tablet they have now changed not only changed times by making the sabbath sunday instead of saturday or the seventh day but they have now changed the law and they have you thinking that you do not have a mother or at least that God doesn't have a mate or God doesn't have a wife what does Jesus say about it I mean Jesus says hey you can deny me but you cannot deny the Holy Spirit see if the Holy Spirit is God's wife another name for God's wife then you can't separate them you know they're they're echad Hear, O Israel, our Lord, our God is Echad. Deuteronomy 6, 4, the Shema. It is a plurality, but it's only two. See, when a man and a woman get together, they become one. When God and his wife get together, they too are one. But yet they're two separate people. But Christ himself is saying that you can deny him. But you cannot deny the Holy Spirit. How is it that I cannot deny the Holy Spirit when there's supposed to be this trinity? 
the the three are one. If anything, it's a triunity, but this concept of the Trinity was developed by a Gentile in 326 AD, uh, Tertullian. I mean, Augustine, he, you know, he brings it even uh, to a higher understanding, you know, because he has some studies and some proficiency in the Egyptian uh, gods. But everyone is mimicking the true God of Israel, the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has a wife, don't you think these other pagan gods are going to have a wife? Israel, who has beseeched you that says that you do not have a mother? Who has beguiled you? Who has tricked you? It is a triunity. Israel's mother is wisdom. Proverbs 8. Do not forsake the instructions of your mother. Do you really think the Bible is talking about your physical mother? Oh, boy. Okay. So, you deny that God has a mate. I mean, at least according to the text. You deny that God has a mate. You deny that God has a wife. Could you be denying the Holy Spirit? Is that an unforgivable sin? Is that taking God's name in vain? When God says that I am plural, I have a mate, and you say, no, you don't. Have you lied or bared a false witness against the Father? It's just something to think about. I am the man of Maranatha of Detroit, Michigan.